520. It's Tuesday, and that means it's time for our third and final main mystery story. This week, Katie has the story of an old main town and its mysterious disappearance, huh? Mm-hmm, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, Lee, but when I think of ghost towns, I usually think of the Old West, mm -hmm. but not many people know there are a few ghost towns right here in Maine. And the site of one of those ghost towns is located near present-day Township 39 on the border of Penobscot and Hancock counties. And in the late 1870s, leather-making giant F. Shaw and Brothers Company built a tannery there along Buffalo Stream. A small town sprang up around the tannery, and years later, the town's sole business came into the ownership of one James Rice, prompting the unincorporated tannery town to become known as Riceville. The lost town of Riceville, though it really wasn't lost, it was just kind of forgotten. Hiking through the woods between Milford and Township 39, you probably wouldn't know the area was once the site of a bustling little town known for making leather shoes. Mike Marino knows there is more than meets the eye. A former member of the one-time Bangor Ghost Hunters, Marino has been out here in the past, searching through what remains of a village site the ghost town of Riceville. There were reports of uh, strange activity out here. We had to come out and investigate. Marino says his group came across the ghost town in the late 1990s, but it wasn't until 2008 when they contacted Oklahoma-based Lost Treasures magazine. Only main guides and hunters knew about it, and they had a claim that they were finding $5 gold pieces on the ground. They brought on the magazine's New England bureau writer, Patricia Hughes, to help them uncover Riceville's mysterious history. Something strange about that. In her search, Hughes found that after 1900, census records showed only about 75 residents occupied Riceville, but the population was completely gone by 1910. We tried to find out as much as we could about it, but all we could find was the legends. According to legend, a small group of people came to town one day to do business, and that's when they found the townspeople, all dead. Supposedly they dug a mass grave, buried everybody in it, covered it up, and then just left it to be. The story was reason enough for me to have Mike Marino take me to this ghost town. Mike and I on the hunt for Riceville. Still we did our best. Our way to Riceville, headed down this embankment right here. But the overgrown paths and the thick of the marsh forced us to turn back. Main author and blogger John R. Cobb recently traveled into the ghost town by canoe. His photos show stone foundations, wells, and rusted pieces of metal still remain, as well as a small cemetery that's occasionally maintained by those who know about it. But it's not the mass grave. So what did happen to the people of Riceville? Hughes and Marino say records are scarce and hard to find, but each blame tainted drinking water. They, they all died of cholera, which was a huge epidemic in Maine in 1908. It did indeed have to do with cholera, and a leak at the tannery. But other records offer a different conclusion. In a 2011 field report on the mercury level in Brandy Pond near Township 39, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service mentions a leather tannery called 39 Tannery on Buffalo Stream that burned down in 1906. Similar reports go on to say it was never rebuilt. So was it sickness that killed the people of Riceville? Or did the fall of the town's sole industry force the residents to pack up and leave? No one alive today can answer that for sure. And that's what makes it a main mystery. And that's going to wrap up my main mystery series for May. However, I've gotten such great feedback that if you would like to send me an idea, I do plan on doing another main mystery series in the near future. You can email me at katie.bavoso at wcsh6.com. We'll be right back.